Hey, what's up guys? This is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. I changed up the lighting in here. What do you think about this new look? It's a little bit different. Maybe you notice, maybe you don't. But in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to take any font or typeface and create outlines and keep it editable in Adobe Photoshop. So this is likely the thumbnail that you saw when you clicked on this video. I think this is the one I'm going to use. Here's what I did. I'm gonna show you first, then we're gonna go through it. Basically, I've got type here, right? And I can completely edit this type, so I could change that to fruit or whatever I want. It's still editable type. It's got a stroke around it to make it an outlined font. And in fact, I could change this to whatever I want, so I've got this uh, good headline pro, I could change it to something in anything. You can see it actually changing when I scroll over all these different font choices. So we're gonna keep it on this one. Uh, this font is good headline pro and I'm going to show you guys how to do this in a new document. Here we go, opening up a new document. All right, anytime, 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 anytime. 1920 by 1080, just kind of a standard little size. It's the thumbnail size. All right, so we're gonna add some type to our page. Click on the type tool, shortcut key is T, and click on your page. Uh, let's say outline, that's what we're gonna use, the word. Now this type is white, so I need to select all with command or control A, or just double click in there. And then I'm going to change the color to, well, let's use something fun, like a minty green color, like this. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my move tool, shortcut key is V, kind of position this somewhere in the center. I can command or control A to select all and then align it horizontally and vertically if I wanted to, if I'm that picky. Okay, so we've got some text on our screen here and it's got a green fill to it. See this layer panel down here? It's got the text layer in there. There's this empty space here that I'm going to double click on and that's gonna open up my layer styles. Inside my layer styles, we have stroke. And if you don't see it, you can go down to the FX button and add a stroke. We're gonna click it so it's checkmarked. And actually changed, we actually have a stroke on there now. I need to click on this so that I can get to those options. We have size, positioning, we have a blending mode option, opacity, and then the color as well. I'm gonna fill this with the same color as my fill. So the stroke's gonna be the same color as my fill. Uh, as long as this color picker popped up, you can select the color or you can kind of hover out here and pick a color. I'm gonna pick that right there and hit okay. Now yours might look a little different, that's okay. It's because we have the size adjustment here. So we can adjust the size. We also have positioning adjustment, which means it's going to be on the center of the outline of our font or it's gonna be on the inside or the outside of it. The inside I kind of rarely use. The center you would use if you've got it just right for this font. A lot of times I use the outside because I think it keeps the integrity of it uh, the best, but depending on the size of the stroke, you might end up just on the center. Now you might be thinking, what do we do with the color of the font? I can't really, this isn't outlined. Well, we've got the outline there. We need to get rid of the fill, the inside. So we're gonna go back up to blending options and there's this little advanced blending section and fill opacity. I'm just gonna take this down to zero. That means that we can see through the fill. There's no, the fill is completely transparent. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. Let's bring in a photo. I think I have that same fruit photo. So we'll just bring that in. This one's from unsplash.com. I'll put up uh, whoever's image this is in the credits here. All right, so I'm just gonna resize this to make sure it is the size of my document hit enter, I simply drug a photo in so it's landed on top of my layers. If I click and drag this, I'm gonna drop it below the outline. So now you can see, I just wanted to prove to you, you can see through this font now. It's also editable, so I can take this outline text and, uh, ooh, what's that word in there? Spanian. So that's something up there, a language I don't recognize. We could put that in there, right? We can edit this in just like any old normal text. So we haven't actually done anything. This is a non-destructive process. Now, what I did to make it more visible over here was a couple of things. Because we're really, I've shown you how to do it now, but if you want a couple of, uh, maybe a, here's, a, here's, some, here's some extra credit, right? So the first thing I did was I thought, all right, there's all this color in the background. This has to be white. So I selected it all, went up and changed my color of my text to white. Oh wait, 
that didn't do anything. That's because that just changes the fill, remember? We need to go to stroke. So I can actually double click on the stroke, and if you don't see it, there's a little drop down panel here that shows your effects. If I double click on that stroke, I can change the color of that. So remember, changing the color of your text isn't going to change anything. You gotta change the color of the stroke. We gotta make that white. Now, I think that the stroke needs to be a little bit thicker for this background so that it stands out a little bit more. So I'm going to go to the size and sort of bring that up. Now I think because it's on the center, it, you know, it looks okay. It looks alright there. I might also check and see what outside looks like. And I might also check and see what inside looks like. Inside's a definite no. Outside, mm, I don't really like how that A starts to lose its center. So really for this word, I would stick with the center position if you're gonna thicken up the stroke. And then I'm gonna hit okay on that. Now what else can I do this? Well, I can actually add a drop shadow to the same text. Double click in that sort of blank area. Let's get back to that layer style. And we have a drop shadow option. Once again, FX to drop shadow if you don't see it check mark that on, it's gonna apply whatever our current defaults are. This is sort of where I think I had them in the last document. But if you adjust things like opacity, how, how dark or how transparent that drop shadow is, you can adjust the size there, the distance that it travels, and, uh, and different options here. But that might help your font sort of stand out a little bit or whatever your word is. And then the last thing would be to adjust the image underneath. So for instance, in my last photo, if we go back to that, uh, this word here, because it's so sharp, I thought, why don't I add a little Gaussian blur to the background so that there's a little bit less detail in the background. And the other thing I added was a little hue and saturation layer to, to sort of darken up and maybe, uh, you could desaturate a little bit if you wanted to, but I kind of liked the color. I just wanted it a little bit darker to make this pop. So if you want to know how to do that, this hue and saturation layer is in your adjustments panel. So it's just an adjustment layer. If you go up to window down to adjustments, it's gonna pull up in this panel. And it's this guy here. You click on that, it adds a hue and saturation. You go back to properties and you can adjust the properties of your hue and saturation layer. Gaussian blur, because we pulled this image in, it's a smart object. If not, you'll want to go to filter convert for smart objects. And then the blur that I like to use most often is Gaussian blur, which is in the blur option right here, right there. And it attaches it as a smart filter, which means we can turn it on and off and do some other fun things with it, or go back in, double click on it and re-edit it. Just like we re-edited the effects, the layer styles of our uh, front facing sort of text here. All right, you guys, that's it. I know I, I know that I went into detail and I started sort of rambling, but I think I got you through up until that point, depending on what you were looking for in this video. That was just a little extra credit time at the end there. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more tutorials just like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.